Well, this problem here, we're looking at the binomial distribution and how it combines with a chi-squared goodness of fit test to see if a distribution or a scenario we have actually fits a binomial scenario. So imagine in a trial of three coins, the coins are tossed. Okay, so when we toss them, the probably obtain we could have zero heads, exactly one head, two heads, or three heads. And so if I make the probability di distribution, I could have x which I know is going to be equal to, um, if I make the probability of big X equaling to little x, I know that this is going to be, the probability, sorry, is going to be, uh, I'm going to find that, and I know that little x is equal to 0, 1, 2, or 3. These are my possibilities that exist for uh, tossing three coins. And so if I want to find these probabilities, I can go to my calculator here, and I've already started to put things in here. So L1 is my possible heads. So if I'm going to find the probabilities, I'm going to go to L3. I'm going to go second distributions. I'm going to go to binomial PDF. And I know there are three trials. My probability of a head is a half. And I'm going to make my x values L1. And I put them in there and I end up with this particular scenario. 1, 2, 5, 3, 7, 5, 3, 7, 5, and a 1, 2, 5. Okay, so Hagar tosses three coins 200 times. He's been busy. Here are all his frequencies. And makes note of the number of heads each time that he has the results. She's interested to find out if her coins are fair. And so she performs a chi-square goodness of fit test that 5% level. So alpha is 5% level. So if these are our probabilities, then we can actually find the expected values here by taking these probabilities and multiplying them by 200. So if I go to column 4, I'm going to go 200, which is how many toss times she tosses the coins, times my L3. And I should get 25, 75, 75 and 25. And this is in L4. This is in L2. So assuming the coins are fair, find the expected values of the number of heads. Well, that's what I've done here. That is in L4. Write down the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and the degrees of freedom of this test. Well, I know I'm asking to see, do these coins fit this expected probability or expected outcome? And so my null hypothesis is always going to be the name of the test. Does it fit? Well, the null, the coins are fair as the frequencies fit what is expected. So this is implying the goodness of fit. So they're fair because they do actually fit. The alternative is that they're not fair because they do not fit what is expected. And the degrees of freedom in this case is going to be categories, which there are one, two, three, four categories. Subtract one. So that's going to be degrees of freedom of 3. My critical value is 7.815. And so if I think about my graph, chi-square graphs always look kind of like this. okay? And sometimes this part's a little bit more steeper and tighter in here. But what we're saying is that there's somewhere in here, there's 7.815. If my critical if my critical value lands in here, so this defines the critical region. This is my critical region. So if my chi-squared value fits in the critical region, then I will reject it. If it's less than 7.8 in this region, then I'm not going to reject the null hypothesis. So let's find the p-value and the chi-squared value, and let us see what happens. So if I leave here, I'm going to go to tests, and I'm going to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. I know my observed values are in L2, and my expected is in L4, conveniently as shown. My degrees of freedom, though, are 3. And so I'm going to calculate my degrees of freedom, and I see a couple things. I see that my p-value equals 0 0.489, and my chi-squared value is equal to 2.43. All right, so now because my chi-squared is over here, it's not in this rejection region 
from that reason, or the other reason that I can say that the p-value is large, my conclusion is going to be I am going to fail to reject the null hypothesis because chi-squared is less than the chi-squared critical value of 7.815. Uh, I'll say critical. Or I could also say because the p-value is bigger than alpha. And so my full conclusion is going to be I fail to reject the null hypothesis as there's no evidence to suggest the distribution is not normal. So we assume the coins are fair because we assume we're saying that these numbers here are close enough to the expected to say that it is actually binomial. This, they're not equal because of random variation.